Hey, what's up guys? Quick video. This one is on motion, and it's a question I've been getting a lot lately, and I wanted to address it. Not just with the Sony 900E or any of the Sony line, but any display for that matter, where those of you like motion interpolation, and different companies have different names for this feature. Cinemotion, different names. Um, you usually have two choices, or a few choices, between motion presets, and then the other choice will be manual. Now, some of you are using motion interpolation um, in movies, and for those of you who don't know what that is or how you hear it referred to is either the dreaded soap opera effect or the beloved soap opera effect. So what I want to show you is that some of you are struggling and you think something's wrong with your display, especially one like the Sony 900E that has a very fast pixel response, and you're un not understanding why you're seeing a blur around the image of your gun or the image around the character. Now first let's go into why you would want this um, in terms of films or in games for that matter. Well for me in movies I don't love it always. I think it does look uh, forced. Even a very fast pixel or motion blur display like the Sony will sometimes show not pixelization but a blur around the image. It's been that way since the feature was introduced, I believe in 2005 or 6. I had it on a 120 hertz Samsung. It was my favorite LED at the time. It was called Touch of Red. And the movie they demoed it on was Iron Man. And in motion, it did have the soap opera effect, but it did create a little bit of a blur. And they've marketed that different as 120 hertz on 60 hertz panels and 240 hertz and every company has their different name for it. So what you're looking at here in terms of gaming, most people don't use it um, real quickly. What I want to put as a disclaimer to this video is, yes, guys, um, in the comments, I do understand that you wouldn't use it in a million years. It does increase input lag. There's no doubt about it. Um, but before you put that in the comments, know that I'm aware of input lag and I don't use it any of any of my multiplayer titles. So I want to show you this. Um, I know it increases input lag is what I'm trying to say. So there's no need to put that in there and no need to say I would never have it in my games. I'll explain to you why people like it, why they use it, and also to get to the bottom of why you might be seeing some blurring around edges of your display or edges of your character or weapon. So this is in game mode. Motion interpolation is off. The feature is off. Why would you want it on? Well, like any preset of, of any, any manufacturer, what happens with graphics or game mode is they turn off some of the other settings. And some of those settings do have picture differences that you may want to keep on, motion being one of them. Why they turn it off in game mode, why they don't give you the chance to keep it on in game mode, is simply because of input lag. And they don't want the display to be slow for gaming, so they turn off all the post-processing, which does change the picture, by the way, for the smoothest, fastest game performance. Now this looks very good. This is Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remaster on the PS4 Pro. It's very responsive. There's no blur or anything, but why would you want to change that with the motion? Well, I'll show you in a sec. So now that we're in standard mode and motion is set to smooth, it basically gives you the feeling of a 240 hertz monitor basically making you feel like the refresh rate is that much higher. So this, in my opinion, is kind of when you're playing on a PC monitor and you're using a mouse, it's just much more responsive. You can look around, it makes things more cinematic. I'm only showing you this in a multiplayer map because I want to be able to control what happens in the background. But in certain games, guys, those of you that are seeing blur, what that is is basically what you have here is the gun everything else is moving. You don't really see blur on the gun itself. Where I've noticed most blur when using this feature is in third person action titles such as Tomb Raider, um, Drake's Uncharted, Gears of War. I don't notice it much in first person shooters. But I'm only guessing because the gun isn't quite as, you know, it's just there, it's a static object, there's no animations on it other than me shooting. I don't really notice the blur. So let me just show you in the options what is available now that we're in a different preset that allows motion. 
So going over to pitch adjustments, I'm just in standard. What it allows you to have is it allows you to have, oh, excuse me, in your clarity tab, it allows you to have your random noise reductions, your digital noise reductions. Smooth gradation is functional on game mode. But most importantly, motion is available. Um, in game mode, that is completely grayed out. You have different presets. You have smooth. You have off, obviously. So let me show you the difference in that. And off, there is a little bit of judder. On smooth, it does exactly what it says it does. It says it's going to do, I should say. Now, it's not for everyone. Just like in movies, um, some people hate it, but some people love it. And some of you base your display choices on whether you have good... If the TV doesn't have very good soap opera effect, you won't purchase that display. The... Sony 900E has an excellent pixel response and is very good for the soap opera effect if you really like it. Now I'm going to show you a couple games where the soap opera effect doesn't look as good and how you can... It's, it's very basic on how to fix it, but I'll show you what's going on. Okay, hold on one sec. Now here we are in the Xbox One X. This is Gears of War 4. And we are in the standard preset, same one that was before. And you'll notice on him... Now, if you look in the background, even on the rectangle, you'll see a little bit of blur. And around him, you'll see it gets a little choppy. See it? That's what you guys are struggling with. Now, what I pertain that to is that it's a third-person shooter. It's, it's set up differently in the way it's supposed to be moving. And you have a static image. You don't just have a gun. You have an entire body around you. Now, it's nothing wrong with your display if you see this. It just means that you're going to have to lower that setting a little bit. So, what I would do is basically go into your options. Now, I know it's a bummer for you guys that want to keep smooth on as high as you can. It's just not something you can do with certain games. Just like in certain movies, um, you'll struggle with that. So, you go into motion. You're going to go from smooth. To, I'm sorry, to custom. And you're just going to move this down until that blur goes away. I find 2 to be the better value. And that's really about the best you can hope for. Now, certain games will have different values, but that is loads better, but you still get the same response, just not as heavy. Now, if you love that heavy soap opera effect, keep it on smooth, you just have to deal with the artifacting around the character. But nothing is wrong with your display, just the way some of these games are. I will say there is one side effect to this, um, especially when you go on to heavy, or back to... Let's see... When you go back to the highest amount, you may notice this on max, okay. Is that watch where the rectangle is when I aim. When you move quickly, it's not, what you might see is a little bit of red. So if you're running around and you have it and you move around and you see the color change around the... It's not really visible here, but it will be visible in some spots. See it right there by the trees when you pan it's really you're trying to control the pixels you're adding black insertion you're adding um, you're adding false frames so if you see that don't freak out but it's another it's just another um, byproduct of trying to control an image that's not designed to be more than 60 60 frames per second so we're trying to make Something that's only designed to go 60 FPS, we're trying to pretend it's going 120 FPS or beyond. So it's only natural to have some artifacting. And I don't mean to say black insertion, that's actually the clear feature, which you guys can use as well. Let's show you that quickly. Um, for those of you who have a 940E that are struggling with the motion on your display, this is how you'll fix it. 
but if you want your motion to be even better, there is a price to pay for it. Black frame insertion is your clearness. And what that'll do is that'll help the motion. It does darken the image significantly. If you have a 940E or a 930E, you know, you can afford to lose some of the brightness. What it does, it basically takes away that, makes things smoother, but it darkens the image. It adds a black frame for every other frame, is, I believe, what it does. But this is why people want that movement. They do want it to be as clear and as smooth as this. Now, those of you, like I said, that are saying it's input lag, I understand. It is very laggy. Um, that's why I recommend it for cinema-based games, games that have a more cinematic view. Now, here we are on Horizon Zero Dawn on the PS4 Pro. Gorgeous game, gorgeous title. And I'm in a cinematic. Hold on. Okay, back. Horizon Zero Dawn on the PS4 Pro. Gorgeous title. Now, why would you want motion on a game like this? Now, if you want that to be cleaned up the way that movement is, some of you are going to want that Cinemotion or that motion added, motion interpolation, to create a more smooth cinematic picture. Again, not for multiplayer, not for a platformer where you'd need um, crazy button mashes or a fighting game where you need to be very, very careful. So we are going to add it. Now, once you look at her hair, you'll see aliasing added into her hair when we go into motion. If we go into motion with it heavy. Motion flow is off. Smooth is pretty heavy, but we're going to max it. Alright, there it is, maxed. And for those of you that have questioned this game, that's why you're going to see some aliasing around her. See how she blurs? See her hair as the pixelation? But look how much more responsive the movement is to the background. So don't look at her, just look at the mountains. And that's the idea behind motion interpolation, is to create a faster or a false frame rate to make things just look more cinematic, more smooth, less judder. Even films in the theater have judder. As long as you don't move too quickly, you won't see the artifact on her, but there it is, see? So again, all you're going to want to do is go back into your settings. For those of you that like this feature, and that's who this video is aimed at, guys, so I'm sorry it's a little bit long and all over the place. But those of you that like this feature, I would go into Motion, set it to Custom, go down to Smoothness, and then literally back off on it until the artifacting dissipates. It might not be much, you might not be able to do it, but each game is going to be different. You're going to see it in first-person shooters, you're going to see it different in third-person games. But a lot of you guys have been saying that you're seeing artifacting and how to reduce it. That is really the only way to do both, is to still have the cinematic aspect of it, but just back off on the, um, the clarity setting, go to manual, and then manually adjust it. That goes for all manufacturers, guys. But for those of you that love this feature and want to use this feature in games, again, I wouldn't use it on multiplayer titles. But for games like this that like that, when you're buying a TV too, you're going to need to really look for that pixel response and motion. Those are the features you're going to look at. Websites like Artings are great because they break down motion and pixel response. You want those to be very high and very responsive if you want to use this feature for games. I never used it really before I had this TV because it just I didn't find it playable on some of the TVs I had in 2016. But it wasn't until I had the 900E that I found Motion to be a fun tool to use on certain titles. Again, if you see the redness of um, against a target or reticle, if that turns red, that's because you're trying to change the pixel response. It's not it's not anything wrong with your display. 
So that's my little haphazard broken video on motion for those of you that were wondering. Your displays are not broken. If you see some kind of artifacting around the character, I just feel that the character is much larger on this screen. She's doing more animations than a static gun in a battlefield or a COD situation. So that's why you're seeing it in certain games and why you'll see it in certain movies, guys. So that's my video on motion. I hope all is well with everyone. Thank you as always and take care.